videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Brad Pitt has recently sold his longtime home which he purchased way back in 1994 from Elvira for $1.7 million. Located in Los Feliz, the actor who's passionate about design and architecture spent decades adding on to and expanding the compound so this time around he was able to get nearly 40 million dollars for the place. Wow. Despite that whopping profit, Brad had recently already put down $40 million for the home he moved on to next, located in the Northern California beach town, Carmel by the Sea. This historic property, also known as the D.L. James House after its original owner, is located on a cliff's edge and was built in 1918, boasting a reported 3,000 square feet of space inside. Other features of the charming property include arched windows made from individually selected bricks, a library on the basement level, a separate service wing, and much more. Over the years, Brad Pitt has owned properties in Hollywood, Spain, New York City, New Orleans, and even in France, where he once shared Chateau Miraval with ex Angelina Jolie. However, the one home he always returned to was his main residence in Los Feliz. It was quite a surprise when it was reported then that Brad had actually let go of his longtime home in an off market deal in spring 2023. He sold the property for a whopping $39 million, which is quite a steal, considering he bought it from Elvira, aka Cassandra Peterson, back in 1994 for only $1.7 million. Brad did spend about three decades though building up the property, adding on neighboring estates and working on it to sharpen his architectural skills. He listed the abode in January for $45 million due to the fact he's reportedly moved to Northern California. Brad's original home was also called Briarcliff Manor and was located in Los Feliz, a trendy neighborhood in LA, which bore orders the massive Griffith Park, close to both the famed Griffith Observatory and the Greek Theater. Over the decades, Brad has created a private paradise for himself and his family by buying up surrounding lots to his original one and expanding it immensely. When he bought the house back in the 90s, Brad was hot off his new success and it made for an interesting story in itself, which was actually told in Elvira's autobiography. The original home was a historic craftsman style estate and is no doubt stunning. Ms. Peterson or Elvira details in her book that she had lived in the manor for some time and was coming to love it, not planning to move anytime soon either as she was expecting and pregnant with her daughter. Brad first appeared in Ms. Peterson's life while auditioning for a role in the Elvira Mistress of the Dark movie, though she recalled him being far too attractive for the part. She then got a random call from him about her home in the Hollywood Hills after he got her number from Nick Nicholas Cage. While Cassandra didn't want to sell the property anymore, Brad was persistent and he ended up convincing her to sell to him. Either way, it's clear that Brad was the right man to purchase the home and he adored the property. Briarcliff Manor was built back in 1910 for an oil baron, so it's pretty vintage. The main house boasts over 5,300 square feet of space with six bedrooms and seven bathrooms. Since Brad snagged this house, he added additional properties to the compound. Not to mention, he's done a lot of work to the main house to make it more family friendly for his six kids and to add privacy. At the time of the recent sale, Brad's compound consisted of five attached properties with four of the buildings having been completely remodeled since purchase. So no wonder it was so expensive. In total, the spread now covers 80,000 square feet of space. Some of the smaller houses around the main house include a home that was rebuilt over a decade after purchase, a house for the nanny, a building that's used as a huge kids area, vacant land with a discreet two bedroom cottage, and more. Brad's vision was to create a free flowing compound that suited the original craftsman homes in the area, dating back to 1915. It's a dream home made for both work and play considering his main house also doubled as a space for his plan B production company, located on one of the upper levels. In the late 90s, a few years after his initial purchase, Brad went on to buy house number two, a smaller one for 380K located at the rear of the land. This structure spans almost 2,500 square feet. He then added on another house costing 475K, which spanned just over 1,600 square feet. Later on, when Brad and Angelina were still together, another addition was made in 2008 for $1.28 million, even though it was a humble 1,500 square foot abode. 
followed. The following year, the former couple spent $1.1 million on a huge barn-like structure, which now reportedly is a secret cave and its own bar. This made it possible to make one building a huge playroom for the kids, also doubling as a living quarters and den for the grown-ups. This completely secluded compound has a bunch of exciting stuff outside too. There are three swimming pools and plenty of terraces and patios to soak up the sun. Further amenities include a tennis courts and a large skate park that goes around a portion of the property. Since Brad's divorce, he added even more fun stuff for his kids. Aerial shots reveal water slides, swings, pool toys, a treehouse, and even a bouncy castle. So the lucky new owner will have a handful of amenities at their fingertips. As for where Brad Pitt has moved, it seems he's made his way to another historic property, this time in Northern California, in the beachside town of Carmel by the Sea. Carmel by the Sea is about 100 miles south of San Francisco, and it had always been a favorite destination for celebrities seeking refuge from the craziness that is Hollywood. The late Betty White owned a beachside home in Carmel up until her passing in 2021, and adored living here. While Clint Eastwood even became the town's mayor back in 1986, serving for two years, and at the age of 92, the actor still lives here. In terms of Brad's latest acquisition, reports say he purchased the property in summer 2022 for $40 million, in what agents are calling one of the most expensive home sales ever in the area. Located in Carmel Highlands, Brad's historic residence overlooks the ocean and is only a stone's throw away from the beach. Built back in 1918 out of locally sourced granite and sandstone, the abode appears to be built into the rock, and it's known as the D.L. James House after its first owner. The home was originally built by architect Charles Sumner Green, and it was last occupied for over 20 years by late Chicago financier Joe Ritchie, who passed away in February. The architect, Green, was influential in the 20th century arts and crafts movement, and he met the first owner, businessman and writer D.L. James, when he moved to Carmel by the Sea in 1916. Soon after Green was hired by James to build the home on the cliff he had purchased, which took four years, and also it defied traditional logic by being constructed on this steep and difficult piece of earth. Considering they chose to use locally sourced sandstone and granite rather than wood, the home does look like it's growing right out of the cliff. The stonework on the exterior walls look like a medieval castle, and there are arched windows as well as a tiled roof for a Mediterranean look as well. The home is laid out as a single level residence, but photos and specific details of the interiors are hard to come by. Previous materials have indicated that Brad's new home measures around 3,000 square feet of space and has plenty of open plan airy living areas. There's also intricate carved marble and details of Green's signature woodwork throughout the premises, showing his arts and crafts style. The arched windows were made from bricks that were individually selected by Green himself, while the property boasts stunning water views. Photos of the home taken in 1997 showed the interiors about 25 years before Brad's purchase, where we can see eye-catching archways, light wood doors, and long mirrors built into the walls. Some of the rooms also featured marble fireplaces and other rustic furnishings. Other highlights of the residence include a service wing for live-in help, a basement level library, and an outdoor courtyard. After James died in 1944, his son acquired the property and lived there with his wife until he passed away in 1988. When Richie, the last owner, purchased the house off of his widow in 1999, he paid $4.5 million and remained there until his death. Richie made headlines in 2001 when he attempted to build an underground tunnel to get to the rocky beach down below. The idea was supposed to replace a staircase which used to be on the property, but it had been washed away by the tide. At the time, the County Planning Commission greenlit the decision, but the Coastal Commission said no to the plans somewhere along the way. Therefore, whether or not the Richies were able to build their secret tunnel is something only Brad Pitt will know. All in all, considering Brad's previous property history and his passion for architecture and design, this seems like the 
the perfect addition to his portfolio. Brad Pitt once told Oprah Winfrey, I love that architecture is this huge art piece you can be inside. I believe it lifts your soul and affects your mindset. Well, until Brad decides to share a glimpse into his new Carmel home, that's gonna bring this house tour to a close. But before we leave, answer me this. If you could build a secret tunnel on your property, where would you have it lead to? Let me know your ideas in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kira the Vampire Slayer and if you would like to check out another tour before you go, then stay tuned for this one where we check out the homes of one of Brad's exes, Jennifer Aniston. Bye! In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Jennifer Aniston's home is definitely where her heart is. The actress has given peeks inside her beautiful and peaceful estate located in Bel Air, Los Angeles ever since she joined Instagram in 2019. Jen is a self-confessed homebody and there's nowhere she'd rather be than at her $21 million home she purchased back in 2011 and decorated to her own personal taste. Jennifer Aniston is an actress and producer who began working in the industry at an early age with an uncredited role in the 1988 film Mac and Me. Jen's first major film role came in the 1993 horror flick Leprechaun, but since we got to know and love her playing Rachel Green on the sitcom Friends, she became one of the world's highest paid actresses. Films with her as the leading role have grossed over $1.6 billion worldwide, with 12 of them earning at least $100 million. That being said, it should come as no surprise that Jen has amassed an estimated net worth of $300 million or more. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment. This time checking out the Bel Air property of Jennifer Aniston and more of her homes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. And now let's get into this video. Jen has been living in her stunning 1970s style mega mansion with her dogs following her split from Justin Thoreau way back in 2018. They bought the place back in 2011 for $21 million, but since then, Jen has completely reimagined the home. Located hillside in the elite neighborhood of Bel Air, Los Angeles, her mansion is fit for a movie star considering its amazing location and privacy. Bel Air is full of celebrity neighbors and is situated in the foothills of the Santa Monica Mountains right off of Sunset Boulevard and offers spots like the Hotel Bel Air and the Bel Air Country Club in close proximity. Jen's estate spans 8,500 square feet of living space inside and sits on about two sprawling acres of land, while there are also four beds and 6.5 baths. From every large balcony in her house, you were able to take in the panoramic ocean and city views. Jen has shown off the minimalistic yet rustic aesthetic of her home time and time again, and she for sure found the perfect balance between classic and modern design. Fans have caught a glimpse of the actress's kitchen, two living areas, and much more over the years, and it's no doubt that Jen is cozy at home with her beloved pet dogs. Walking into Jen's mansion, you're greeted by an impressive 14-foot front door, leading into an airy entrance hall with sparkling chandelier and an indoor koi pond. The pond is covered by a beautiful wooden bridge and leads into more open space boasting a zen-like feel. Jen is really proud of her home and collaborated with designer Stephen Shadley, who's helped her on previous houses, to transform the place into basically her perfect LA retreat. She's described her home as a big hug and stating that she loves the silence there. Her designer Stephen explained about her taste. Jen is drawn to wood, stone, and bronze materials that have real substance and depth. No matter how beautiful or glamorous something is, it has to be warm and inviting. One of Jen's favorite things about her home is the fact that it's the perfect place to hold gatherings and parties to entertain family and friends. There are certainly enough bedrooms at Jen's mansion for her friends, and there's also a ton of room to entertain them. The actress often both the actress often hosts her pals at her house for dinner and luncheons 
And it's obvious that she purchased this extraordinary property to be able to share it with her loved ones too. Of course, she has a handful of beautifully designed common areas in her house. For instance, there's Jen's living room where she loves to unwind and has given us a glimpse of on her Instagram. It offers a great color palette throughout and the sofa has a silvery throw and patterned matching cushion. We've seen one living room with a gold embroidered wall as well and large cream armchair. She also has a photo shelf in this room. Jen's kitchen, where she says she spends a lot of her time, is a modern masterpiece with plenty of islands and cupboard space. Not to mention it's fit with a pizza oven and a wine room as well as high ceilings and an open, relaxed vibe. Guests usually gather in the large games room where you can see Jen's vintage pool overlooking LA, so it has a bit of an indoor-outdoor flow. The interior of her home definitely lets in a lot of light, has floor-to-ceiling windows and a modern, open design for the most part. In fact, Jen's abode actually offers two separate living wings, so there's a lot of room to roam around. Other features to keep her entertained include the home movie theater, her exceptional home office, and the large outdoor swimming pool. There's also an additional guest house. Jen has changed a lot about the home since her divorce, but it's as elegant as ever. Jen's master suite may now even be the feature of the mansion, and it sits at the end of a long hallway boasting a large platform bed with motorized TV at the end, and further opens up onto a private garden terrace with outdoor seating area. Of course, she has a spa-like style master bathroom with a marble tub and features that she shared photos of before. Jen has more than one impressive closet at her home. Her massive walk-in attached to her bedroom is almost the size of a studio apartment and it has been shown in snaps posted to her Instagram as well or her stylist team's social media account. Jen's closet is basically more like a giant dressing room and there's even space for a catwalk when she tries on her outfit. She has three huge floor-to-ceiling wardrobes here full of well-organized clothes and accessories as well as a vanity table for hair and makeup. When her and Justin were still living together, he even told Ryan Seacrest that she turned the garage of the home into a closet as well, explaining, We have made an extension on our house. I don't know what was made into what, but we found more room to create a better bathroom and a closet. Throughout the home, there are plenty of walkout terraces and balconies, like this one that Jen had posted photos of surrounded by glass railings. Elsewhere, Jen has created a sunny and plant-lined home gym, which features floor-to-ceiling windows, along with weight sets, kettlebells, and more exercise equipment. No wonder the star always looks so fit. On the surrounding grounds of Jen's mansion, there's an outdoor cabana with fireplace and lounge chairs, as well as the large pool with tanning deck attached, while her huge garden has Buddhist statues and beautiful landscaping. This space is perfect for a peaceful stroll. The property also used to have a hillside vineyard, but Jen's garden design designer and architect wanted it instead to be an oasis consisting of terraces, like Asian-inspired pocket gardens and interconnected rooms. Jen has perfect privacy at her estate as well, thanks to a tall wooden fence and surrounding gate. Prior to Jen's Bel Air estate, she called many California mansions home, each one more beautiful than the last, it seems. One of the homes she owned way back with ex Brad Pitt was actually on the market not too long ago, and from looking at photos, it's a definite favorite of mine. Back in 2001, Jen and Brad bought this mansion for over $13 million located in Beverly Hills, Los Angeles, and when it was put on the market, the prices increased over the years to over $44 million. This French Normandy revival-style mansion spanned a massive 12,000 square feet of living space with four beds and 12 baths in the main house, as well as an additional guest house with bedroom. The estate was super elegant and not to mention private. There were two separate gated entrances to the home on different streets, which isn't surprising since the land covered over 1.2 acres. Jen's previous home had a light-filled living room with floor-to-ceiling windows, a gourmet eating kitchen, and dining room that fit up to 20. Other features included a home gym, a large private screening room, and even a pub room with floors from a 200-year-old French chateau. There's a lower-level bar, sitting room, and a great room with windows and French doors that open up to the patio. On the grounds outside, you'll find plenty of space to dine and entertain, along with a huge swimming pool, outdoor fireplace, and a more recently added tennis court. 
Well, now we've checked out where Jennifer Aniston calls home, so that wraps up this house tour. We got to check out her beloved Bel Air property where she loves to unwind. We got to check out her beloved Bel Air property where she loves to unwind with her pups and seemingly has created the home to fit her favorite design taste. Out of all the features, what was your favorite part of the mansion? I thought it was so peaceful and homey and love the outdoor landscaping, gardens, and the pool too. Well, be sure to let me know what you liked or didn't like about Jen's home down in the comments. Thanks for tuning in, follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye!